everyone, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fop. And today's video is a little different than usual. We are actually going to go out thrifting today, flip and DIY our thrifted finds and see if we can sell them on Facebook Marketplace. And to be honest with you guys, I've been watching a bunch of flipping and reselling videos lately on YouTube. I have just been hooked on seeing what people can create and what they can flip it for. And I wanted to create my own little version here on the Lone Fox channel. But I absolutely want to preface at the start that I am not a professional furniture flipper. This is just something that I absolutely love doing. And I genuinely think it's going to be fun to see what people like, like what they're gravitated towards first. And also I think it's going to be fun to see what we can actually create from thrifted vines. But we need to head out to the thrift store and see what we are going to be creating. So let's get going. So I am out with Justin today. He's right here. And we are heading to a couple of thrift stores to see if we can find any potential furniture pieces to flip. I'm actually gonna grab some hairspray quickly because we've been out for a while now and my hair looks like this. Yeah. What do I do about this hair texture problem? My I have secured the hairspray and it will hopefully secure my head. I have to use strength number five. If this video gets 250,000 views, you show people your natural hair. I've shown my people my natural hair many times. All right, we're ready now. I'm ready to film. Our first stop is St. Vincent de Paul Thrift Store. This is St. Vincent de Paul Thrift in downtown Los Angeles, kind of like East LA. It is one of my favorite thrift stores. It's massive. It's like they have like a warehouse in here and there's a lot to look at. And normally the prices are pretty good as well. See if there's anything we can flip, transform, DIY, and make some money on. Honestly, pairs of lamps are hard to come by on Marketplace, so if we could find a pair of lamps to flip, that would be great. Oh my gosh, chicken lamp. It's kind of cool. The base, it's like turned wood. This is so cute, is it not? Oh my gosh, it says Italy on the bottom. Italy 1102. Gosh, a little finial, just fix it up a bit. So cute. Those are kind of pretty, right? We found something good, look at this. Not with the shade, of course, but this is a really cute lamp. It's actually old, too. It's like an older rattan light. Oh, like a match. Even the plugs are older. They're $19.99 each, but if we got new shades and maybe did like a fabric covered shade, I feel like these could be such a great pair of lamps. This is like the top of the dress. But look at it. Old tiles, all these old tiles. I think they're old. They definitely are. Yeah, there's definitely like, look at the back. What if we put like a shelf on the bottom and turns it into like a wall shelf and like a rack and it's like a kitchen. Like you can hang top, like things on the Ooh, bottom and I then like that. canisters and stuff can go up top. It's 45, which is not bad. What is that? That looks kind of stunning. It's 200. I think these are the legs that actually went with that piece of super East Lake style and so this one. We're at our second location. Found a few pieces at the last, but I thought since we're already in the area, this out of the closet superstore is a really fun one. It's like five minutes from the other shop too. So if you're in the area, stop by as well. You know that's right. That's pretty. Okay, you guys, this has so much potential without this face. Are you kidding me? What is that? Look how pretty those colors are. These chairs here are actually pretty cute. Look at them. There's two of them. It's bamboo-y. Okay, so I'm at the last location for today. This is the Goodwill Bins because this place in Los Angeles is rather large. I don't know if you can see how big this building is. It looks like the size of a freaking Costco and I'm hoping we could find maybe one or two more things that we could flip, make a little money on. So let's go in and see what we can find. This is kind of cool. It's like a trunk. Uh, Oh my gosh. Refinish the top and see how much it costs. Okay, it's too expensive. Five dollars. <laughs> it's only five dollars. It has this lash, which I think probably was original. Maybe they had to take it off. It would have gone right here. 
Which we could figure a way to mount it so it's at least out decoratively. It's so pretty, this cool lock. Even if it's like on the top or something. It has these really cute little circular handle details too on the side. Three, four, five. Go. Thank you. Go. It is the next morning and I'm about to go out and get some supplies so we can work on these projects today. And I would love to get all of them done in one day because I think it's doable. The actual DIYs and projects and kind of like additions I wanna to do to each of them are not too intensive. However, there are more projects than I thought I was actually going to get. I think we ended up with like four really good items. So hopefully we can flip those. So I'm gonna head out, get the supplies this morning, come back here and let's see what we could get accomplished in one day. You saw yesterday that I picked up the legs for that East Lake dresser, and I also picked up the like top back portion, but there was no tabletop. I'm actually gonna pivot my idea, use the legs for one project, and then with the other piece, I'm gonna create like a kitchen wall shelf with a pot hanger on the underside because I think I can maximize profits that way. I'm at Lowe's right now, and these are large format tiles. So you would put these like in a shower or like on the floor, as you could see. They're not my favorite when you actually use them in interior because I just don't love how glossy and faux they feel and look. However, I think we could turn one of these into a tabletop because one piece, like for example, this one down here, one entire piece is only $22. a second look at these ones that i just found over here this one is 34 for the piece but it has like a honed finish i don't know if you could tell all the other ones even including the one that i just like showed you guys they have like a super glossy one this has like a honed realistic marble feel and for two more dollars i am gonna get this one like look how much more interesting than this the lampshade for our lamps are 34 dollars each which is a bit more than i wanted to spend so i don't think i'm going to cover them in fabric because it's going to add to the cost so i think i might do paint or something because i have that at home already and i won't have to add any more to this price Lowe's, I was actually able to get everything there and I ordered one thing on Amazon that's on its way. I think I mentioned that I'm going to be separating the bottom portion of the dresser from the top portion of the dresser because the middle portion was already missing. We don't have the full original dresser anyways. And I think that we can create two really stunning pieces with both elements and to be able to provide like two new items. So here is the East Lake style dresser, like bottom section. And you can tell the age of this just by the wood on the interior, like it has such a great patina to it. And it has these really nice workable drawers still. So the idea was to create like a new tabletop for this and turn it into like a miniature kitchen island. Like, which would be so cute for an apartment. And even on Marketplace, I can kind of market it as like a small kitchen island. I got one of those large format tiles to place on top. And I'm hoping that we don't have to cut this tile down. Here is our our gorgeous marble slab, aka porcelain tile. Porcelain. I think that's like a cute size. The drawers will be like definitely tucked under. And once we have it all trimmed and colored the same, I actually think this is gonna look really, really pretty. I think I also wanna add some casters to the legs, which will increase the price a little bit on this piece, but let's get to cutting down a piece of plywood, which I actually have remaining over from the headboard that I created in the guest room makeover. So I have a piece of plywood we can cut down. I'm gonna cut it down to the exact same size as this piece here. Look at this area here. It kind of like fills in the areas, the cracks. It darkens any little like light colored wood specks um, and also just gives the piece like a really pretty sheen in the end. So I just love this product. And I've had this can also for quite a while. Like I've used it on many projects. And this is actually a preferred product for antique or vintage restoration because you can apply it over the top of previous finishes and it only just intensifies and adds to them. It never really like diminishes or takes away from the finish. So I love using this when the pieces look a little drab or just need some extra life. Alrighty, I hope you can see how incredible the wood looks now there are literally no chips it looks nice and refinished almost but still has a nice kind of authentic aged look to it
cutting down the wood for the tabletop. You know these extruder guns for your like glue, which is what we're gonna glue this the uh, tabletop down with. It actually has a little hole here and you just slip this in. Then watch. If you ever knew you had one of these on the bottom of your thing. Flip it back and there you go. Like so easy, I always am trying to like find something to jam down in there. Can't even cut the thing off the top with normal scissors. So a little tip. Treat the up application. Yeah, I like to give like a good keeping amount of glue. Oh, the sun is warming my soul. <laughs> off the edge of our piece I got some one by twos that I just mitered along the corners and nailed them into the plywood piece that we had screwed down first that our tile is glued to and then once I had all of those secured down I used some wood filler to just fill in any cracks any crevices along the corners and anywhere where the tile just isn't meeting up perfectly to the wood let that dry and sanded it down of course and then went in with a little bit of tape to protect our countertop before going in with some stain that I already had on hand this is Bombay mahogany in the poly shades it adds a nice Nice bit of red tone to the wood and then I go in with a little bit of this gel stain in the color coffee. I ordered these casters on Amazon which the bottom already actually was created for casters so I just hammered them in super quickly and easily and then I added these two little racks on the side. These are actually cabinet handles I had in my stash but I figured they could be pot racks or just towel holders. Let's move on to our next project, which actually features another piece. The first piece that we found of that dresser, which I love so much because it has the original tile, which this is probably from like late 1800s, early 1900s. And this tile is extremely old and it's really beautiful too. Like still in great contact. Sometimes you see these and they're broken. So when I first initially saw this piece, I was thinking in my head, like kitchen, wall shelf, pot hanger underneath with S hooks, turning it into like a really cute little charming addition for a kitchen space. And that's still what I wanna do. We're probably gonna do the same exact technique of cleaning this piece up with the Brie Wax and just giving it like a wipe down. Here is the wood that I'm actually going to be using for the shelf on the bottom. I got a one by eight and I'm just gonna cut it down to the length that I need. Here's our shelf. I'm gonna be using this stain here, which I've actually had on hand. It's a gel stain in the color coffee from Minwax and I just have never used it. I bought it a long time ago for a project. So I'm hoping this will give us a dark color. Right, so with that stain, I actually got it super dark and then I ended up going over the top of it. A little bit of this poly shades one here in the Bombay Mahogany, which is like kind of that reddish tone, which I realize this piece has kind of a reddish tone to it. And I'm actually pretty happy with that color match. This is going to be mounted on the bottom once it dries and then we'll add our additional details to this piece. Here's our stained shelf all dried. I let this dry overnight and now I'm going to be adding this towel bar that I actually picked up on Amazon. This was like $20. Taking the shelf that now has the little brackets attached and I'm going to attach this to the underside with just some of these screws here, which will be hidden because they're pretty dark. Now that this is attached, I'm going to put on our little rod. All right, added the bar on and this is how it's looking. I just need to add some hangers on the back and this piece will be done. Here's our next project, which is this really great trunk that I shared with you that we got yesterday from the Goodwill bins for $5. It's in pretty rough shape. Like there's a lot of water damage and staining to the wood. And I honestly don't think I need to do too much to this in terms of like DIY. I think it's beautiful. Like the wood is great. This is a product here that we're going to be using. It is Savilgram's Wood Bleach, which is a oxalic acid. And this is supposed to basically bleach uncoated wood, removes black water spots and stains. You mix it with a gallon of hot water. I've never used this before, but I've seen a bunch of furniture refinishers use it on social media. So I want to give it a try. Oh 
So by the way, this cost $12 for the wood bleacher product. So, so far we've spent only $17 on this coffee table. Here we go. Get it in there. Really Just fluorescent orange. Yeah, what's happening? This was looking like this, like 20 seconds ago. Like maybe if I even focus like a little more like on those spots. Oh my gosh, it's like, it just lightened that. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? It was really dirty too. That's true. my furniture piece. I'm gonna wash it off and get any other residual product off. It kind of leaves like a little bit of a powdery coat on top. In the inside too. And now I'm going to leave this to dry overnight and we are going to see how it looks tomorrow. It is the next morning and look how lightened our trunk has got. It looks so good. I'm actually surprised how light it got and how great that product worked. We did a little sanding on the top just because the top was a bit more imperfect than like all the sides, probably from use. As a last step, I'm going to seal this with a little bit of furniture wax. So this one is the clear magnolia wax, but I also have the aged look and character one. It's like the black wax or dark wax. So I'm going to apply this on the entire piece. It's just gonna kind of give it a little bit of rehydration because the wood kind of feels stripped right now and just make it overall a little bit protected. It's just a re, it's just nourishing the wood. Nourishing it. Because the top was fully sanded, it ended up being so much lighter than the sides. Like all the sides still have kind of that like natural patina to them. And this is super smooth. So I had this stain, it's called Ipswich Pine. And it kind of has a little bit of this reddish tone to it. So I'm just applying this over the top of the wax to try to make the sides and the top blend a little better and make the top a little more aged looking. And that already looks so much better. And now we're just gonna let it sit out in the sun and just kind of fully dry. Figured I'd save the easiest project for last, which is going to be our lamp project. You saw that I picked up these two vintage style rattan lights and they actually are definitely older. Like I can even tell with the wiring and I picked up some simple lampshades to go on top of them. They are going to look a little something like this. I actually have some of this leftover um, like amber colored ribbon. It has a gold trim on it, but I think it could be kind of cute. It's from Christmas. This should be pretty simple. I'm thinking I'm just going to be gluing. Place the ribbon. this little short one somewhere. I feel like this looks so cute. The ribbon has like a little lettuce hem kind of to it. So it adds like a little roughly imperfect look. Welcome to a room that you guys actually do not get to come in very often. This is where I shoot all the products for my online store. This is actually like just an additional bedroom downstairs. It has shelving all across here, tons and tons of stuff. This entire wall, I keep blank and open because I shoot vintage furniture for my website and decor and just lots of different projects where I need a blank white wall. So this is like the one blank wall in my home. And I figure I might as well also use this as the area to shoot photos because something I can tell you, if you can style your photo or give someone a vision on how they could use what you are selling, just a little bit more than just throwing it somewhere and taking a picture, that is going to sell your item just a bit more. So I think we're gonna start off with the lamps because they're on the smaller side. I'm also waiting for the casters to come still for the island piece. So I think we're gonna have to shoot that one tomorrow morning. And I'm just gonna put them on top of this console table. This was like the last vintage furniture piece I shot. So it's already been sitting here. I think it's pretty simple. It's clean. It basically shows the items really nicely. Like I'm gonna be using my phone to take the photos for these. So I'm just going to snap some photos and it's always nice to do a couple photos and also a video. Do a little video on Facebook Marketplace because it's helpful. This, that looks really nice. Honestly, these should be good. I'm also gonna measure them so I know the dimensions for the listing. Some little canisters. That's the vibe. 
That's the vibe right there. And a video. Our kitchen shelf has been photographed. Our last piece is complete, and this has got to be my favorite of the bunch. Like, it is so stunning. I love the way that this turned out. We added casters on the bottom, so it's literally completely rollable, but we made sure that the casters also had locks on them, so you can lock it into place if, like, someone wanted to put this in their kitchen. And then I also added two little, these are, like, long cabinet handles. I had them left over from an old project, added on either side to, essentially, that is literally so cute. And then the other side, we can just do like a hand towel. I feel like that's pretty cute. That's so freaking cute. Why, hello everyone. I feel like this is a moment we have all been waiting for. It's actually been about four days since I listed the items. And I didn't actually end up filming myself listing them because it was late at night. I just did it on my phone. And we went ahead and actually listed them on Justin's account because I kind of didn't want people to just purchase them because it came from my account. Because I've had that happen before in the past on items that people are just like, I want your things. And I'm like, okay, that's good, but. I didn't want that to deter people's thoughts and opinions on these items and if they would actually sell, if that makes sense. We should go in order of how they were actually created. So the first thing that we created was the Antique Kitchen Island on Wheels. And as you can see, this did sell. I ended up actually listing this for $450. We put that it's a beautiful kitchen rolling island made out of an Art Nouveau style wash stand or dry sink, which is exactly what we got. So a rough cost breakdown of this piece to create was $30 for the base. Let's also say $10 for the plywood, just because I did use it, even though I already had it. For $40, I also purchased a $32 slab for the top or piece of tile for the top. There's 72 and then also the wood that I used to trim it out. That was $12. And honestly, the other components, I used two little handles I've already had in my stash for a while and then just some stain as well that I already had. So let's round this up to about $100. And this piece, I ended up listing for $450 because I actually do feel like it looks stunning. Keep in mind, I live in LA, so there was a ton of designers here, a lot of design happening in Los Angeles. However, this actually sold to a mom who bought it for her daughter for her new apartment. And I thought that that was really great. She actually had a lug come and pick it up today and it's off to its new home. And I cannot wait to see it. Hopefully I get some photos of it in the space. The next thing that we created was the kitchen shelf slash like hanging rack. And I just thought that this would be such a charming little addition to like a smaller kitchen. Or if you just wanted the look of like hanging pots and pans in your space, but you didn't know how to do it. I thought this was just really cute all in all. And it's something that you guys can totally emulate as well. Now to create this piece, I actually ended up spending $45 on the tile portion itself, $8 on the wood that I used for the shelf. That's around 53. And then I placed a $30 Amazon order for the bar and for the hooks that I used on this. We're at 83. And then for the stain that I used and just the screws that I used, I feel like we could probably bring this up to like $85, $90 or so. And this right here is the listing for for the piece. Now this one doesn't say sold on it. However, it is sold actually. Now this one I listed for 250 and it got quite a bit of response. I think we got about 15 different messages on this wall shelf, but all of them were really low ball offers until we had a lady that actually lives in LA, but she's currently traveling in New York. She ended up purchasing it for $225 and she Venmoed that payment over today to hold the shelf. But this tile shelf situation sold for 225. The next piece that we ended up flipping was was the coffee table. And this one by far was the most affordable in terms of cost. We paid $5 for the coffee table itself and $12 for the bleaching product. And that is all I used on this coffee table because I loved the natural wood on this piece. I feel like the mechanism inside was also the star of the show. So I didn't feel like it really needed too much done to it. And something I'll say is we only have two messages. However, we do have one offer on the coffee table. We ended up listing this coffee table for $250 and we've had two messages on it asking if it's available. And 
one offer of 150 so far. And we basically messaged the person back saying that we've only had it up for a day and that we'll get back to them if things change. But at the moment, we are still looking for the full offer price. So if you're interested in Live in LA, search storage coffee table. I'm sure it will pop up. So we could hope at least to get 150 out of this, which I do feel like is a good deal still. Like we didn't have to do too much work to this actual piece itself. And the last item and the most popular of all was the pair of wicker lamps. This is the first item that I actually ended up listing on Marketplace. And by the end of listing all four, we already had like seven messages on those wicker lamps. Um, again, with low ball offers, like we had people sending in $100 for the set. I ended up listing the pair for $250 and we sold the pair for $250, which in hindsight, I probably could have got a little more out of them because there was such high demand on them. And something else I also pointed out like towards the beginning of this video was that there really are not a lot of pairs of lamps on Marketplace. So I feel like when they pop up, people are like, oh my gosh, like I need that lamp, you know? And they ended up turning out really cute. I think all in all, we got like 25 messages on these lamps and they did sell for 250. The lady actually picked them up this morning for full price. But I will say I kind of spent a decent amount on these lamps. I invested in new shades, which was $70 for the pair. And then the lamps alone cost us 40. So we're already in 110. And then the only thing I did was add that little ribbon detail, which I feel like at max we could say was $5. So let's say 115 for these lamps and they ended up selling for 250 But something I will say as well is these by far were the easiest to flip They were the quickest to flip all I did was glue a strip of ribbon on them and post them on marketplace So looking at everything that I kind of did I think maybe going in the realm of Lamps again go to the lamp section first and seeing if I could find lamps would be the route I'd go if I flip more furniture in the future But I really loved creating this video and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It was a definitely a little bit of a different video for my channel, but I thought it would be fun to see if I was able to actually sell some of the DIYs that I create and also give you some inspiration if you're out vintage shopping. Maybe you could flip something even if it's just for your home or if you want to sell it, keep that in mind as well. I don't even know what the grand total is, but I will pop it up right here. Let's see how much profit we made. I'm hoping we made a decent amount. Like what can we buy with this? Like what should we do you guys? Leave a comment down below. Alrighty guys, I will catch you all in my next one and thank you so much for watching. Bye.